auspicious day, the first Sunday program in the year 2019. We are speaking from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, verse number 10. Verses also on the board. Nesham Satita Yogana.
spiritual master are important. One should know that the goal is Krishna, and when the goal is assigned, then the path is slowly but progressively traversed, and the ultimate goal is achieved. When a person knows that the goal of life but is addicted to the fruits of activities, he is acting in karma yoga. When he knows that the goal is Krishna, but he takes pleasure in mental speculations, to understand Krishna, he is acting in jnana yoga. And when he knows the goal and seeks Krishna completely in Krishna consciousness and devotional service, he is acting in bhakti yoga or buddhi yoga, which is the complete yoga. This complete yoga is the highest perfectional stage of life. A person may have a bona fide spiritual master and may be attached to a spiritual organization, but if he is still not intelligent enough to make progress, then Krishna from within gives him instructions so that he may ultimately come to him without difficulty. The qualification is that a person always engage himself in Krishna consciousness and with love and devotion render all kinds of service. He should perform some sort of work for Krishna and that work should be with love. If a devotee is not intelligent enough to make progress on the path of self-realization but is sincere and devoted to the activities of devotional service, the Lord gives him a chance to make progress and ultimately attain to him. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Ajnana Shalakarya Chaturun Nivitamyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhista Stavitam Yena Bhutale Swalam Rupakadam Mayam Tadati Swaparam Dikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Pada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sarajatam Sahakana Ragna Tantvitam Tamsatevam Sarvayatam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahadana Dalita Sri Sushaka Vitamscha E Krishna Pada Siddhu Dina Bandhu Jagatale Gopesha Opika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastare Tapta Kanta Gorande Radhe Bhagavad Gita in four verses, right? 
Krishna had described, first of all, Sambandha Dhyan, how he's the source of everything, material and spiritual. That was in verse number 8 of this chapter. Then in verse number 9, Lord Krishna spoke about the process, Abhideya, how the devotees are enlightening one another, discussing about them. And now, in this verse, in the next verse, Lord Krishna is describing Kriyojana, or the goal, of, the goal of this process, which is this loving reciprocation with Krishna. So, as described in this verse, Lord Krishna describes how He helps us in our progress to come to Him. When we are constantly devoted to Him, right? Qualification. Not that He just helps everyone, but He has a special relationship to those who are constantly devoted to Him. With love, right? Pretty for becomes mentioned. So the attitude of love should be there. Someone asked me recently, one of our young devotees from China, because I travel in China usually, so I, was, I got a letter from one devotee in China and they asked me about what is this love? Because we often use this word love in the material sense. So what do we mean here when Krishna speaks about love? Uh, or Prabhupada mentions here that we have to serve Krishna with love. You see, it's a very special attitude which is not very common in the material world. Love is often something which is more like more of lust than actual real love. We don't fully know what is real love a real loving relationship. Although often we do find love in family relationships. For example, a mother gives birth to a child and naturally she has so much love for her child. She will take care of the child at every moment. This is the loving relationship between the mother and the child. So, a devotee also has a relationship with Krishna and they want to serve Krishna. Of course, that is something we have to cultivate, this mood of serving Krishna with love. Prabhupada explains how it has to, it comes about slowly, progressively. It will take us some time and according to how we endeavor, how much we try to serve Krishna, then Krishna reciprocates with us. But love is something which, when, where we will give service without any desire for something to return, it is, that is pure love. Generally, in the material world, you know, we, we will give something, we want something back in return. We don't just give service without expecting something in return. You know, we work in a company, you work for, a, for some organization, you expect to get something in return. But Krishna wants loving service. He wants service which is without any material desire, without any motivation. That we just simply want to give service to Krishna. And we do it out of love. Of course, we will say, well, you know, I love my child, but I don't know if I love Krishna. <laughs> But actually, the person who we all love the most is Krishna. But we don't realize it. We've forgotten Krishna. And we're thinking in terms of the body, and we think, this is my child, these are my, or these are my children, these are my family members, 
I love them. But actually, the person we really love is Krishna. Because the, the person who we think we love is also part of Krishna. But we identify with the body. And we, we think of the body, we love their body. Just like mother loves the child, she's given birth to the body. But that body is not the real child. The real child is actually the soul within the body. And that soul is a part of Krishna. The person who we really love is Krishna. We can't love the body. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes what is the body. He explains, Vachamsi Janani Yata Vihaya Navani Krinati Naroparani Tata Sharirani Vihaya Janani Anyani Navati Navani Dehi Lord Krishna is explaining that the body is just like a dress. And just as you give up the old cloth and get new ones, so in the same way we give up the old body and take a new body. So when you get a new cloth, you don't worry about the old cloth. Or when you get a new car, you don't worry about the old car. Right? When you get a new house, you forget about the old house. And similarly, when we get a new body, we forget about the old body. This body is just like that, just like a dress. And just as we change the dress, we change also the body. So it's not the dress we love, but it's the person in the dress. And what is it which gives life to that dress? It's the soul. Without the soul, then there's no life in that body. That soul is the part and parcel of Lord Krishna. The person we all have a loving relationship with is Krishna. But we have to discover that. And the way to discover it is through the medium of devotional service. When we engage ourselves in not just simple, simply service, but devotional service, meaning service with love, then Krishna reciprocates, just as he describes here in this verse. He says that I give the understanding by which they may come to me. So Krishna from the heart guides us from within. Prabhupada explains, you may be a member of an organization, just like you're all members here of ISKCON, and many of you also have a bona fide spiritual master. And we have a relationship with the founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada. We're taking instruction, direction from him. But still, you know, the material world is very entangling and we may not be so intelligent to understand what we need to do to make advancement. Therefore, Krishna from within the heart gives us direction what we need to do. Just like from the heart, He may direct us. We have to start chanting Hare Krishna more. We're not chanting Hare Krishna enough. Or we need to read Prabhupada's books a little more. We need to follow more carefully, more strictly. Sometimes we may be a little slack in following. Just like uh, we were celebrating Ikadasi. Ikadasi on the New Year's Day. So part of the process of devotional service is to observe holy days like 
Ekadesi. Right? Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, Madhava Titi Bhakti Janani. The holy days like Ekadesi, Janmastami, another holy day, when we observe them, then becomes the mother of devotion for those who take shelter of them. Just like on the Ekadesi day, what should we do? There are some things we're supposed to do, some things we're supposed to not do. We're not supposed to eat grain on the Ekadesi day, right? We don't eat the grain and we don't eat the beans on the holy day like Ekadesi. But you can eat, you can take prasada, take fruits, you can take uh, vegetables and often devotees will take potatoes and things like this and sabodana, you know, tapioca and like this. These kind of things, these are not grains. So the devotee can continue to take prasada, not that you have to do full fasting, but we, Prabhupada did like us to increase our hearing and chanting. On the Janmashtami day, Prabhupada was in the temple in America, in New Vrindavan, and the devotees were fasting the whole day. You know Janmashtami? Generally, it's a, a full fast until midnight. Of course, if you have some gastric or you have some illness, you may not be able to observe the full fasting. All right, you have to know according to your health requirements. But for those people who are in good health, it's recommended you do the full fast on the Janmashtami day. And of course in India today, Hindu people all over the world, they observe this festival and they will observe fasting. In fact, in India, Janmashtami is a public holiday so you're not if you're not working, you can you know easier to fast. But other people maybe have to work, you know, you're not in good health, then take some fruit or take something to keep yourself, take some, you know, food so that you can continue your service. But this is devotional service. Observing these days, like Ikanasi, twice a month we have the Ikanasi fasting a day in which we want to eat lighter. We don't take the heavy food like the grains. We don't eat rice like usual. Now often we eat too much anyway. So it's good for the body that one day you eat light. So you don't eat the heavy food. And what do you do? You increase hearing and chanting. Chant more rounds. <coughs> Prabhupada told us I remember in Srila Prabhupada's time, he wanted us to chant 25 rounds on Ekadasi. Now usually it was 16 rounds, but on the Ekadasi day, he wanted us to chant 25 rounds, to increase our chanting. And many of our centers now, they observe also, they have a program, they have a program on the Ekadasi, they will gather in the evening in the temple and have more kirtan and sometimes some reading and reciting prayers like this because this is Ikadasi. And Ikadasi is a day which is dear to Lord Krishna. So sometimes devotees, you know, we're, we're busy in our material life and we forget, forget to observe these holy days. So Krishna, from within, He will instruct us. We have to become more careful, have to become more serious. Sometimes it, we may be neglectful in other things. Most important is in our chanting. We don't want to minimize our chanting. Prabhupada wanted us every day to chant at least 16 rounds. Of course, initially, Prabhupada wanted the bodies to chant 64 rounds because that was what his Guru Maharaj, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, wanted. But devotees, Western devotees in particular, 
They said, oh, we can't do that. It's too much. So then Prabhupada reduced it to 32 and then finally 16. But he said, 16 is minimum. Try to chant more. <laughs> so sometimes we're neglectful. We don't even chant 16 rounds. Then, very difficult to make progress in Krishna consciousness. And we have four regulated principles. Sometimes people will say, oh, it's so difficult, four principles. If only there was only three principles, it would be easier. People want to make concessions. Actually, four principles is very less. I was in Thailand doing Sankirtan, book distribution there, and I distributed a book to one man and he was asking me about Krishna consciousness and he said, he asked me, how many rules do you have? So I said, we have four rules, four, four principles. He said, only four? He said, in Buddhism, there are hundreds. He said, but they can hardly follow any of them. So then it's Buddhism. Anyway, uh, we're lucky. We only have four principles. And these four principles are from the Shastra. The four principles of religion. The four legs of the bull. Satyam, Sojam, Daya, Tapa. Right? Satyam, truthfulness. Truthfulness, a Brahminical quality. A Brahmin will be truthful. We don't have to lie. We don't have to tell, hide the truth. We have to be open. Just like Prabhupada tells the story about the young boy who wanted to enter the school. So the teacher asked the young boy, who's your father? So the young boy said, I don't know. So he said, go and ask your mother. So the boy went home and asked the mother, who's my father, what's my father's name? And the mother said to the young boy, I don't know. So the young boy came back and told the teacher, my mother doesn't know who is my father. So the teacher said, okay, you can become a student in our school. Now usually, you know, a normal tongue person may feel ashamed to think, oh, my mother didn't know who's my father. This is terrible. This guy. They may, you know, make up a name and say this was my father. But the young boy was so honest, he simply told the teacher, my mother doesn't know who's my father. So the teacher understood, this boy is very truthful. He doesn't lie. So he must be Brahman, he must be a, this is a Brahminical quality. So he said, you come to our school, take education. Right? And schooling is for Brahmins, people with good character, truthful. So truthfulness, one of the principles of religion. We should be truthful. Truthful is destroyed by gambling and lying propaganda exaggerating, saying things, untruthful things. So truthfulness is very important. It is said, Mother Earth can bear any burden except the burden of a liar. If somebody is not truthful, there's a great burden on the planet. So truthfulness, sojam, sojam, cleanliness. Cleanliness is not only external, not just bathing regularly, but also internal cleanliness, cleaning the heart. And we have to do that by chanting the holy name. Some parts of the world, for example, if you go to Russia and North China just now, it's very cold. I was in Beijing a month ago, it was minus 12 and other places, minus 18, minus 25, you know, we cannot imagine how cold. So difficult for people to take back there. Sometimes 
the water's all frozen, you know, the water's frozen, but it's so cold. So, how to take bath? Take bath in the holy name. The holy name is the, the, the bath. When we chant the holy name of Krishna from the heart, then we can cleanse the mind of all contamination. So, this is a very good bath. Every day we want to regularly bathe in the holy name. Not only just bathing in water, cool water. In this part of the world, it's refreshing to bathe in water. In other parts of the world where it's freezing, you know, you wouldn't think to take bath. So cleanliness, important. Another Brahminical quality. Then daya, mercy. A mercy is destroyed by the killing of animals, not being kind to other living entities. Sometimes we kill a lot of trees, just like in Malaysia, they plant a lot of trees and regularly kill them. You know, this is all destroying mercy. We need to be merciful to all living entities. And certainly we don't want to eat animal eating meat, fish, and egg, these things, these are impure and destroy the quality of mercy. And then tapa, austerity, austerity is destroyed by pride. In this age people are very proud. Prabhupada said, even if one has only, he's only one ringgit, he's thinking I'm a very rich man. Right? Wondering if can I buy anything. Then even the pauper is proud of their ring. <laughs> right? So pride, we have to give up pride. And if we are proud, we won't want to be austere. And the austerity means we get purified. We have to control the senses. By doing austerity, we get purification of body and mind and sense control. But if we're proud, we don't like austerity. We don't like rules and regulations. Rules and regulations are for advanced society. The more we're civilized, the more we progress. The more rules and regulations help us. So it's important for us to understand these things. And even if we're not very intelligent to understand them, if we are sincerely trying to do service to Krishna, Krishna from the heart will arrange for us to be guided. We see examples of people how Krishna arranged for them to get instruction. Just like the Brahmana was reading Bhagavad Gita outside the temple of Trichi and Sri Rangam, Lord Ranganath's temple there in Trichi. Every day the Brahmana was reading Bhagavad Gita, the same Bhagavad Gita we are reading. But the Brahmana was not educated, so he could not read it very well. Nobody had taught him how to read it. And other Brahmanas were laughing. So Lord Chaitanya was coming to the temple every day and he saw the Brahmana reading. And so he inquired from the Brahmana that, what are you doing? He said, the Brahmana said, my spiritual master told me every day I have to read Bhagavad Gita. Srila Prabhupada also wanted us every day to read Bhagavad Gita. He tried to read a chapter a day. You can read a chapter a day, you can finish it in 18 days, then read it again, and then read it five, six, seven, ten times, then we start to know it. Right? If we read it regularly, we will start to know it. This education is necessary. We have to hear. So the Brahmana said, my guru told me every day, every day, so I'm reading every day. But I'm not very good, I'm not educated. Lord Chaitanya was very pleased. He said, oh, it's very good. Your guru told you and you're following his instruction. We have to have faith in the order of the guru. 
यश्य देवे पराबक्तिर यथा देवे तथा गुरु सश्य की प्रकृता ही आता प्रकशंति महात्मना अंतु दोस ग्रेट सोल्स को हैव फेल इन बोथ गुरु एंड इन कृष्णा दें ऑल द परफॉर्म्स ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स आर रिवील वेरी इजीली so the lord chaitanya congratulated this brahmana that you have faith in the words of your guru very good but lord chaitanya said why are you crying lord chaitanya saw the tears coming from the eyes of the brahmana so the brahmana said because when i read the bhagavad gita i'm thinking how lord krishna is so merciful that he became the chariot driver of this devotee Now becoming the chariot driver means to become like a sudra. The Lord Krishna is the supreme Brahman, Para Brahman, the supreme Lord, the Lord and Master of everyone. But he becomes the servant of his devotee, like Arjuna, and he is driving the chariot of Arjuna. So the Brahmana told Lord Chaitanya, whenever I think of how merciful Krishna is. That he could become the charioteer of Arjuna, then it fills my eyes with tears. And when Lord Chaitanya heard this, Lord Chaitanya embraced him and said, "You are the real leader of Bhagavad Gita. You have actually understood the meaning of Gita." So, like this. Lord Chaitanya was appreciating the internal mood of this Brahman, although he was not materially able to read the Bhagavad Gita very well. But his consciousness was filled with devotion, and therefore Lord Chaitanya every day would come there and instruct him and guide him how to read the Bhagavad Gita. So Krishna arranges. When we are sincere, by it said by the mercy of Krishna, we get a spiritual teacher, and by the mercy of the spiritual teacher, then we get Krishna. It's like that. There's reciprocation. Krishna sends us a spiritual teacher, and the spiritual teacher arranges for us to come to Krishna. We just have to play our part. We have to simply engage in the service of Krishna. That service means activities, just like there are many activities here in this center. There are many different things to be done. We have the deities to be worshipped. We have regular programs. You just had a rathi atra. Here in Nepal, just a week ago or so, we had a big rathi atra, a lot of work, putting on festivals. Every day the deities are worshipped. They have to be dressed. They have to have offerings. The temple has to be maintained. It has to be cleaned. It has to be looked after. So much work. Just like in this Nepal, you know, the climate's very extreme. This afternoon, downpour of rain, heavy rain. So it takes a lot of work maintaining the temple, looking after the temple, and all of this work requires manpower. We need resources, right? Not only money, but also manpower. People, lay men, and not only men, ladies also. Ladies also do a lot of service in our Krishna conscious centers. So Krishna gives us. So much opportunity for devotional service, and that devotional service, when we are desiring to get out of this material world, that is buddhi yoga. Buddhi yoga that we simply want to be engaged in Krishna's service without any thought of anything in return. Voluntary service, right? Serving out of love. And when we give that kind of service, Krishna reciprocates in the heart. He gives more understanding what we need to do to come to Him. 
No, we all should desire to go back to Krishna, to be with Krishna. We want to be with Krishna. We want to revive our loving relationship with Him. And we do it through the process of Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga begins with hearing and chanting. So hearing, just like you're all here this evening, you're hearing. And hearing again, after hearing, then you can also chant. You can repeat. You go home, somebody may ask you, what happened? What did you learn? You can explain. Tell them what was discussed, what was talked about. Chanting. We can, we're hearing also kirtan. Somebody reads the kirtan, we respond, we chant. So hearing and chanting are very important parts of bhakti yoga. And if we don't have much taste for these things, we can, even though we're not very much inclined to hear, but we can always do service. There's a lot of service to be done for the temple, for Krishna. And by doing service, we clean the heart. It's not ordinary service. The material world, we work for something in return, we get paid some salary, we get something money in return. But in Krishna consciousness, we get more love for Krishna, we get more devotion, we get free of the dirty things from the heart. Right? That is important for us. We want to be engaged in devotional service with that kind of mood, to clean the heart. Just like Lord Chaitanya explains in the Shikshastra, Chaito Dharpanam Marjanam, right? That the heart is like a mirror. And just as the mirror becomes covered with dust, you cannot see anything in the mirror. You have to clean the mirror in order to see the reflection. In the same way, our heart is covered with dust. And we can clean the dust through loving service to Krishna. And when we clean the heart, then we will see Krishna. As Krishna, as Lord Brahma says, Primanjana charita bhakti vilo chanena Santa sadaiva ridayeshu vilo kayanti Yam Shama Sundaram Ajinja Guna Swarupam Govindam Hadi Pursham Tamaham Rajami. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is Krishna, Shan Sundar himself, in, with inconceivable, innumerable attributes, whom the pure devotee sees within the heart of hearts, with the eye of devotion tinged with the south of love, right? Love, again this love, what is this love? This love means to Krishna. We are giving love to the body, we are giving love to so many material things. These material things, this is also Krishna's energy, but we should understand who is it? Who is the proprietor of all this energy? Ultimately, everything is Krishna. And it's Krishna who we want to love. We can, and we can do it very easily. Simply by chanting, taking part in this Krishna conscious program. Regularly coming, hearing, working in the service of Krishna. We can all become joyful souls. The nature of the soul is to be happy. When we are connecting to Krishna, we feel joy, we feel pleasure. In the material world, we find so much frustration, so much anxiety, so many problems. But when we are working in Krishna consciousness, it's a joy. People often speak of the Hare Krishna devotees as being very happy, very joyful. We're always seeing chanting, 
and dancing. Yesterday it was a very big Rathiyatra, drip fields. Many people came, many people all chanting, dancing, and taking Krishna Prasada, seeing Lord Jagannath. So we want to go on like that in Krishna Consciousness 2019 beginning. Let us pray that we can have a successful year here in Nepal and continue to develop the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Are there any questions or comments? It was very nice to hear so many people chant the slokas. Now we want you all to ask questions. <laughs> right? Very good to practice putting questions to the speaker. Something you may like to discuss, something is not clear, something you feel we can talk about which has not been discussed. It's important to put questions, right? Tatvidi pranipadena hari prashnena sevaya. Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively. So putting questions, the whole Bhagavad Gita is Arjuna putting questions to Krishna. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Maharaj Parikshit is putting questions to Sukadeva Goswami. Right? You want, you, have, you also, you have to practice putting questions. It's a very good exercise for our brain to inquire, to understand more this subject matter. Yes, If we're just doing sadhana, are we sure to go back to Godhead? Well, it's not only just doing sadhana, but it's how you do the sadhana. <laughs> it's not just mechanically doing it, right? We may, just like being here in the class, it's not just being physically present, but we have to also be hearing. The idea is that there will be some, you know, effect. Not just that you sit here and you think, how long before prasadam? Right? Then you don't get much benefit. Of course, nice you're thinking about prasadam. That's something. But, but the idea is we want to hear. So you do sadhana. How do you do the sadhana? Do we do it with love? Or do we do it? Oh, I better do it. If I don't do it, you know, I'll get punished. <laughs> That's not very good. No, we have to do the sadhana with love. That we want to do it. We enjoy it. It becomes part of our life. That it means something to me. Just like coming here on Sunday. I hope it means something to all of you to come here to the temple. We look forward to it, to come here and to take part in the program, to see the deities and be in the association of devotees. It's very satisfying to the heart. And that's where the soul is, right? If you satisfy the heart, our soul is also satisfied. So doing sadhana alone, it may take, you, you need also mercy. It's not just only doing, but we need to get also 
Krishna's mercy. There are two things required. Just like Mother Yashoda, remember in Damodar Lila, Mother Yashoda was trying to bind up Krishna, but the rope was always too short. And it was always just two fingers short. And those two fingers represent something very important. One finger represents our spiritual practice, our sadhana, and the other thing is Krishna's mercy. So, we want to go back to Godhead. We need also Krishna's mercy. Not just only sadhana. Of course we do sadhana, but we have to, we want mercy. We have to attract the mercy. We don't just, oh, we can't just only expect mercy. To get mercy alone without doing sadhana, that's very unusual, very rare. Just like somebody may get honorary degree. They didn't go to university, but the university gives them a degree. Very special. Did you get a degree like that without going? No. Everybody else, you have to go to school, you have to study, you have to do exams. Then you get degree. So similarly, it's not just only mercy. We can't just only, oh Krishna give me mercy. I don't have time to chant, I can't do any sadhana, just give me mercy. <laughs> it won't work, that's not enough. And you may do sadhana, but you don't, you don't do it with love. We don't, we don't really feel for Krishna, we have no feelings for Krishna. We haven't, our heart is still hard. We have to soften the heart. The heart has to melt. We have to have feeling some attachment for Krishna. When we have that, just to take Keshams of the Tayyuktanam, that is a pretty poor become. Pretty poor become, right? That deep loving attachment and affection for Krishna. That feeling for Krishna, that will attract the mercy. So we want to cultivate that kind of mood in performing our sadhana. Therefore Prabhupada says it's going to take some time. It's not we just do sadhana that now I'm doing sadhana I have to go back to Godhead. Some people think now I'm initiating, now I can go back to Godhead. No, initiation is the beginning. And sadhana is also practice. It's like the beginning. We have to perfect. We become the sadhya. Perfect. When we become a sadhya, when we become perfect in our practice, then you can go back to God. Right? But sadhana, we're still practicing. So we have to develop that feeling of love for Krishna. We can go back to God, it is possible, but we depend on Krishna's mercy and we also do sadhana. We do our own practice intensely. We should practice our sadhana intensely with a strong desire, deep loving attachment. Oh, I want to see Krishna. Oh, I want to chant the holy name. I have to chant. Prabhupada was, Prabhupada was not living in the temple when he was a householder. You know, Srila Prabhupada, before he went to the West, he was a family man. And he was living with his children, but every day he would be chanting the holy name. And he would be reading also the books. He would be going to temple sometimes, sometimes go to the temple, bring his children. But every day he would be chanting the holy name. People would see him. Sometimes devotees would come to his home and visit him. They would find him chanting. Or they would find him reading. They never found him in Maya. They never found him watching television. They never found him in the cinema. They never found him 
reading news, wasting his time reading newspapers. He was always busy in Krishna's service. So we also want to be like that, keep ourselves busy, do nice sadhana, and desire also to get the mercy of Krishna. Of, of course, when we think like that, then you're already back to Godhead. Right? A devotee is liberating in this life. You don't have to think that, oh, I want to get out of this world. We're already liberated if we're using the body and the mind and the words in the service of Krishna. Right? One who uses his body, mind and words in the service of Krishna then he is a liberated soul, even in this lifetime. So you can be back to Godhead in this very life. You don't have to wait for the end of life to get liberation. You can be liberated now by using everything for Krishna in Krishna's service. So that's real sadhana. You use the body, mind and words in the service of chanting, serving. Yes, Prabhu? Humble obsessions to you, Maharaj. Uh, you mentioned three uh, methods uh, of service of Krishna. <coughs> uh, hearing, chanting and service. Is there any other way like Mahavadam, any other important uh, service? That oh, we can do? oh, yes. Because uh, sometimes uh, you know, you are busy at work, uh -huh. you may be working uh, 12 hours, okay. uh, maybe on call perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, you may not have time for chanting. Is Maharani thinking of God Krishna uh, a good devotional service? Or is there any other method? Well, we do speak about the nine different limbs of bhakti. Nav Anga Bhakti. There are nine different methods of applying ourselves in devotional service. And it begins with the hearing, shravanam and kirtan, chanting. And then when we hear nicely, and then chant nicely, then smaranam comes about. So there's a progression. You see, it's not that you can just remember if you have not heard the chanting. If we want to remember, first we have to hear, and then we have to repeat it, to make sure we've heard it, we've chanted, and then remembrance comes about. So there's a progression. It becomes more and more difficult, right? So smaranam is possible, but to do smaranam, you have to first hear and chant. And then also vandanam, offering prayers. Now many people, they come to temple, and when we come to temple, we recite prayers. I was in Hong Kong, in our temple in Hong Kong, and I noticed one woman coming every morning, and I was listening to what she was chanting, and I recognized she was chanting the prayers, the Gopi Gita. The Gopi Gita, the song of the Gopis, which they sang to Lord Krishna which is in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Anybody know that? Tavakatamritam tapta jivanam kavindiritam kaumasapaham shravanamangalam shrimadatatam bhuvikrinantiye kuridajana Like that, there are many verses. Gopi Gita. So every morning she was coming, this is a type of devotional service, vandanam. You should know some prayers, some people recite Vishnu Sahasrana, some people, Vishnu Sahasrana, 1,000 names of Vishnu is equal to one's chanting the name of Ram. So why chant 1,000 names of Vishnu, chant the name of Ram? So, anyway, Mandana, offering prayers is also there. Worshipping, Artana, offering the worship to the Lord. Generally, one should be initiated devotee to do that kind of service. 
So you have to be trained how to properly serve the deity, worship the deity, and then uh, Artunam Vandana, serving the lotus feet, Pada Sevanam. Just like Lakshmi is serving the lotus feet of Lord Narayan, so we serve the lotus feet of the Lord. One way in which we can do that is by going to the holy places. We visit the holy dham and perform parigrama, go around the places, go through the twelve forests of Vrindavan or the nine islands of Navadvi and visit all these holy places. That is Padasevanam. And then also Dashya, being a servant, just like Hanuman is a wonderful servant of Lord Ram. And then Arjuna is a friend. And then Bali Maharaj surrendered everything at Mani Vedanam. So becoming the friend of the Lord and surrendering everything are very difficult. Therefore, very, very advanced devotees. You have to be Raganuga Bhakti on the level of Raganuga Bhakti to perform that kind of devotional service. So the, the beginning or the, the, the foundation for the Bhakti is this Shravanam and Kirtan the hearing and chant. So yeah, yeah, we have to make some time in the course of the day to do hearing and chanting. Otherwise, the, the other levels of bhakti will not really be possible unless we've done proper hearing and chanting. Yeah. But I appreciate your question, your inquiry is very, very nice. Okay. And sometimes we're very busy, <laughs> we don't have time, much time. We have to make some time for these things, for hearing and chanting. Every day, just like we make time to eat, you make time to, you know, to bathe, you make time to see your family, speak with your children, and so on. We have to take some time also to do this hearing and chanting important for us. How much time? But we will we'll vary. But generally for chanting, we want to, we should expect about two hours in the day. It's not a waste of time. It's a very good use of our time. If you spend, if you can devote yourself to regularly chanting for a couple of hours, then you get so much benefit, so much mental peace, so much inner pleasure, you will feel the benefit of this chanting if you take advantage to do this. Just make the time. It appears like a great sacrifice, but it's, 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 it has its rewards. And the rewards are there in inner peace. And we feel Krishna is also pleased. As we surrender to Krishna, Krishna reciprocates. He reveals himself more to us. So like that.